How's it going, guys? It's Carlos, your host of the Just Fans podcast. I'm joined here by my most reliable co-host, Rios. How's it going, Rios? Doing pretty well. I don't know about that other guy, but man, it's good to be here. <laughs> no, no, no. He actually hit me up today. He said he's going to be out for a little while, but he'll be he'll be back as soon as possible. If, uh, sure. <laughs> no, he ended up moving. He's in a new place, and he's uh, he's better off, so that's good. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see him soon, but uh, it'll be a little bit before. But nice, no, cool. sends out his I'm best sure. regards to everybody. I'm sure the roaches miss him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course today our special guest. I'm I'm so happy to have this guy here because the talent, his music. I sort of got I, I I when I when I'm going down the street, I'm like I'm just like playing his music on on Spotify on repeat. Man, he's he's got his his music is just amazing. So. Please, guys, welcome to the show, Mark Drew. How's it going, Mark? How's your day? Man, going? Appreciate y'all for having me, and thank you for uh, listening to the music. I'm glad you enjoy it. Oh, of course, man. It's it, man. man. It's it's uh it's so, uh, the whole it's a whole vibe, man. <laughs> thank you, man. I work really hard on it, so it's, it's it's rewarding to hear that. Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, so, <laughs> funny story. I was uh some uh when we so I was in Argentina a couple weeks ago, and uh, mm -hmm. by one of my, when we came back. Literally, the, as soon as we landed uh, on the plane, my girlfriend's, uh, uh, her best friend from her childhood uh, came over from Argentina the following day. So, you know how IAH right now is like a mess because of the construction or whatnot. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm going to be in line. So, I was, uh, I was in line. Luckily, I was in line for too long. The whole point of that story is the whole time I was jamming to, to Ready to Rain, I was jamming to uh, these other songs like loudly. And about two people asked me, "Hey, what's?" Because we were like there, almost like neck and neck. Like, "Hey, what's what song is that?" I was like, "I was like, here, check it out. It's uh, it's uh, my friend Mark Drew, and uh, they listen." But I'm assuming so. There you go. Man, um, you're the man. I appreciate you. No, no, not a problem. It's it's dude. Like I said, it's it's Houston. It's local, uh, and it's just great music to hear. You know, uh, and, and we're just big fans of it. I am at least, and I think Rios. You made a fan of Rios too, so I was kind of like like it right now. The fact that you were kind of like bobbing your head to our intro, I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> we, did, we did something good, y'all. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. say your intro is hard. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you. Appreciate you. So, Mark, uh, uh, I want to make sure that for those those uh, we our our chat our our episodes are uh, get aired in other um, in other networks that are not that are not too familiar with Houston. So. Before we start, I want to give a big shout out to the Let's Talk Sports Network. Uh, Dan, the man, I appreciate you. Uh, thanks for everything. Hope you, you know, hope you feel better, brother. I appreciate. Uh, looking forward to talking to you again. Uh, of course, our friends at the sideline uh, sports as well, and of course, our friends uh, in Philadelphia or wherever they are, Hardcore Sports Network. I appreciate it. So, with that being said, Mark, since we have a few people that listen to us that are from out of state, out of the city, out of the country, uh, out of the country, even. Um, uh, I wanted to let me ask you a little bit. How did how did this whole fascination with music begin? Like, at what age did you start really digging deep into into music? I think for me, um, I've always been really really creative, and I mean, I love sports too. Sports is like my first love, but like, like ever since I was like two and three years old, I always like whether it was drawing, whether it was like you know building like cities out of legos or playing with connects and just like using my imagination to build whatever i wanted or um i took art classes and then everything kind of was just always like finding like i would go to different like mediums until i found like music be kind of it came it became clear to me that was something i wanted to do i think uh i really started to have the biggest like attraction to to writing uh when i was like 15 and then when i was like 17 18 is the first time i remember myself like wanting to produce so around that time wow so relatively young you were like from the get-go like yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying, to, trying to get it going uh i like the fact that you said you started uh like writing and stuff like that at that about that age of 15 and usually i mean at least i remember here like in the schools in, in houston it, it looks like a lot of people came out of their shell and started like in writing like I, I know the high school that i went to a lot of people wanted to you know start their own you know everybody everybody had their own uh not, not labels per se but like their own music yeah. or their own songs that they wanted to produce but you know uh in in i mean i'm assuming in the game like like that it's just some people make it and some people just don't you know and it's it's very hard to to make it which is you know awesome to see that you're you're dude uh, 
you're doing great. I mean, I mean, like I'm I said, it's, you don't know, no, it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm like really hooked on your music right now. So, uh, who's, who did you really look when you were writing these things, when you were writing like your music and, and, or your songs, who was like your biggest inspiration that you can kind of, that you looked up to or, em or wanted to emulate your stuff after? I think as far as like rapping goes, um, Jay-Z was always my favorite rapper. Um, I feel like, um, what I love most about him was like every time you heard him like on a new album, it was always kind of just an update on his life. Yeah. So like, yeah, you know, his early work is he's talking about like, you know, um, his past, like, you know, like doing uh, selling drugs or like, you know, doing the stuff that got him to ultimately, you know, where he was. And then but when he got a little older, you stop hearing him talk about that. It was like, all right, well, now I'm making millions. So like I don't have to talk about that anymore because my life is here right now. That was my favorite thing about him. And as a producer, I've always like wanted to be like Kanye, Pharrell, and Timbaland. Those are my three. Those are good. Yeah, uh, Kanye. I mean, say what you you know. Kanye, I know right now is going through you know all that. But if you <laughs> yeah. if you look if you listen to Kanye's music back in like the early uh, early to late two thousands, it it was it was amazing music that he was producing. Like yeah. that he was coming out with. Next Next level stuff back then, man. And yeah. he gave me hope as a rapper because when I was a kid, I, I mean, I've always loved, like, I've always loved rap music and I always, like, you know, kind of one day would hope I would be able to, you know, to be able to rap. Mm -hmm. But, like, when I was a kid, I was like, man, I don't know if I, if rapping would be for me because, like, I ain't never shot nobody. I ain't never sold drugs. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, early 2000s, you know, I'm right. like, I don't know if anyone would want to hear what I have to say, but then, you know, people like Kanye West made it made me feel like it's actually possible to be a normal guy and just want to make music. Yeah. No, exactly. It, it's, a, it's a great point that you made. It's like you, if you hadn't done any of that, like how do you expect to be there? But as you said, Kanye made you, you know, at that time made you believe, oh, no, I can be a guy. I could talk about being in class yeah, and writing, so and, you know, whatever it comes to your mind. And uh, you don't have to get moment. shot nine times to drop a hot album, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> but drop this album, y'all. Hold on, no. <laughs> so, exactly. So that, that's awesome to hear that, dude. Uh, yeah, Kanye, like I said, he at the time he was almost like untouchable, and then yeah, you know, he made some great albums, and it was it was great stuff. Uh, I was uh, how do you call it? So now you know what what would you say? So now, as you said about Jay Z, you know he adds on to his personal life and he updates his personal life. Do you? Whenever you're writing your music, do you influence some of that for you? Like, do you write your per like something about your personal stuff or whatever it is yeah. you're going through? A lot of it's uh, personal experiences, but sometimes it's just like you know what I see throughout the day. So, like, I have a song called Handlebars, and like some people hear it, and I thought I was talking about me being on drugs. Yeah, and, like, no, like it came from like I was just on like the feeder road for 45, and um, I would just like you know see the homeless people, and and sometimes I try to like because I would catch myself like. Not like don't talk to me, don't look at me, like type thing. Like just mm -hmm. look straight forward. Mm -hmm. and, then, and one day I was like, man, like I kind of feel bad because I want to at least acknowledge their existence. Yeah. And so it's like, like, yeah, because you never know what's going on with people. How did people get to that point? You know, it's that's like, what that song's all about, right? It, exactly. No, when I listened to it, I was like, wow, this is um, like that was one of the songs I was listening to in the yeah. airport. That's the actually cool. that's actually the song that that person was like jamming to because it has a it has a really good beat to it. And then, uh, but the lyrics themselves are are a whole other level as well. And uh, while we were there, it's just like the guy was like, "Hey, what song, what song is that?" And I told him it was it was Handlebars. I just I just didn't say which one it was at first, but it was yeah, it yeah, was yeah. Handlebars. Dude. But yeah, uh, it's almost like you have to put yourself in a in a different mindset because again, you know, people are, you know, I, and I, I'm not trying to make a statement or anything, but it's just you never know what people are going through to get to that story. level. You never yeah, know. Yeah. You know, and that's what we do as human beings. Like we're really quick to assume something that we have nothing, like we have no clue about. So, oh yeah, okay. that's that song and and some of my other songs will come from stuff I see people go through. I like to think that the world is my guinea pigs. So just because I don't physically go through something, right. I can learn from someone else's experience and maybe talk about that. No, exactly. Uh, one of your songs that I'm that I really like is Tuve. Oh, yeah. that's that's a good one too. Uh, uh, kind of like how yeah. I feel about just everything and yeah. 
leading up to that. So yeah, yeah. I love that song. It, it's a good one. Please, like I say, guys, you, uh, if you're if you haven't uh, if you haven't listened to Mark Drew's music, you're missing out. This is some this is good music to listen to. You're dri- for me. I I listen to it when I'm driving, and so now that I'm gonna be. Since I go, I, I, I teach, so now I'm going to be going back to uh, to work. I know on my way, on my long drives to work, I'm going to be jamming to Mark Drew's music. So that's, that's I appreciate that, man. You're no, the no man. No problem. And well, so, my, my drive's only two minutes, so. I oh, must be nice. <laughs> must be nice, sir. Must be nice. Yeah, man. No, so, all right, let's talk about, like, uh, your young. So what kind of, like, when you were in school and writing these, like, what, what kind of kid were you in school? Like, um... I don't know. I, I was kind of like cool with like different walks of life. So I was able to like kind of blend in with kind of, di- I mean, I'm from Acres Home. So like I'm not, I was never raised uh. in this area, but mm-hmm. like I can exist in areas like that and then exist in like total opposite areas that have not. Like I remember, so 249, 249 was a dividing like highway between the two middle schools that fit into, I went to Klein Forest. Yeah, so the two middle schools and like my side was more of like the low income like families, and the other side you had really nice houses. So like, there's experiences like that. I'm, I'm I was able to kind of like get in and fit in with different types of people. So in school, I I would have like some of the people that I would hang out with would be random as hell. It'd be like people that were come from this walk of life, and then people that come from this one. So I was able to kind of blend in a little bit, pretty good. That's cool. You had like a like a different like a different crowd. Not everybody was like the same. You get to yeah. like, almost to people's um, to people's uh, style or whatnot. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Sounds like a leaf. Well, except the rich part. There was no rich people in a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny? So, like I thought at the time, I thought the uh, the nicer side was rich. They're really not. They're just like upper middle class. I just remember seeing two story houses and be like, "Oh my god, this is a, they have money." <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you got your own room? You got your own bed? What? Yeah. Oh, what tripped me out? What tripped me out was I like I had friends who played baseball. Those were, like a lot of kids I hung out with, and I would like go over to their houses, and they would live in like those neighborhoods. Yeah. And no one would ever lock the door when they leave. I'm like, bro, why? What, like, what are you doing? And they're right? like, like, yeah, and they're like, oh, we don't. No one really locks the door around here. Like, bro, why? we have like a lock and then a burglar bar. And then, yeah. <laughs> Right, the, the deadbolt. Uh, uh, was it the the bars on those windows or whatever that? Yeah, <laughs> the right. Windows. And then we lock every door in the house. <laughs> and if we leave, we have to turn on the TV to make to to make people think right. that we're home. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> radio, yeah. And then you have to right. and you have the security chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like a fifteen minute like procedure the to leave the house. Like. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we're always late to things because we have the 15 minutes of uh, locking down the house, making sure nobody steals our, our stuff. Huh? There you go. Even, yeah, even, like, though, even though all you got in there is like a TV and a bed, you know, stay out secure. Hey, but and that's your like, TV and your bed. And then just to go around the block and be like, did I lock the front door? <laughs> gotta go back. God damn it. It's a procedure. It's a procedure. Yeah, man. Oh, that's funny. You brought back memories. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> right on. Right on. Oh, man. Uh, so, hey, I know you, you brought up uh, the point that you had friends that played baseball. Uh, when I met you uh, at, a, uh, at a, how do you call it, at a, the Lockdown Astros uh, uh, meet and greet over there at, at Hooters in Pearland, when I met you there, uh, you told me that you used to pitch. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell us about how that, that experience went? How was your experience as a pitcher? Um. It helps actually a lot with with today. Um, any sport I've always played, I've always kind of just like gravitated to somewhere like leadership was, you know, was on. It. And then there's so many times where like I find myself in jams pitching that I carry with me to this day as far as like a mentality thing, mm-hmm. um, especially like making music full time. The thing about making music full time, or I'm sure like, you know, you guys, any anytime you do something to entertain through a creative place, you're relying on people's habits to make you money. It's not like, you know, if you're a barber, people need haircuts. Like people don't need to make music. They want to make music. So when I would like make, when I first started doing this full time, I mean, I don't want to say how, I'll I'll tell you guys off how much, uh, off camera, how much the studio was that I was renting. If I say it, people be like, you're so stupid for agreeing to that. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. (laughs) Probably was. We, believe me, all the off-camera stuff is usually the best part. I wish we could always record it right. yeah. <laughs> nah. We'd well, be so canceled like, in a heartbeat. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, like, the studio was expensive. My apartment 
was expensive. My car was expensive. And everything was always hidden at once. So right. when those moments would come, I was like, man, I got to like make something happen. It mm -hmm. would go back to like, there's one, um, there's one experience in particular pitching where like I started the last inning bases loaded, no outs. And my coach came up there. He's like, look, like you've been pitching a great game. Like there's no, there's no shame in like bringing in a reliever right now. I was like, yes, there is. I'm going to finish this shit. You felt, yeah. And it's so, like um, and so I struck out the next two and got the third to pop up to, to uh, hey, short hey. There you go. So, like those moments like build me up to like, man, I'm resilient. Like, and, and I feel like that's what beauty about sports. It teaches us about life. You don't have to go pro to have those moments to show yourself like, I can do anything even when my back's against the wall. No, that's exactly right. It's a, it's a great outlook. It's a great way to look at things because it once you I feel like once you mentally get over that and you don't get in your head too much, you're able to accomplish just so much. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. And so, yeah, once that's out, out the door, man, you become a dangerous person. And uh, I feel like and I feel like now seeing you seeing listening to your music listening to just how and seeing your seeing how much you you know how much you uh, overcome is i think you know you're you're doing great so brother like seriously yeah. I, I, i'm looking forward to seeing you um succeed uh just because also I want to brag about it and be like, yeah, he was on our show once. Yeah. Now look I, at want him. Brag, I want to brag that I was on the show, man. Oh, there you go. See, see you go. I want to see you guys like continue to prosper and thank continue you, to grow. Thank you. Appreciate doing it. Doing all right. Let's say we're doing pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Like, you know, every, uh, one, one guy we got to give a big uh, shout out to is uh, our mutual friend, H10 Wheelhouse, Brett Chansey. Oh, yeah. uh, Brett. Absolutely. And I gotta say, it's like I know it's your believe me, I know it's your story, but I was like, if, if it wasn't for him, I don't think uh, us we would have met because no, had, yeah, yeah, you know, and he's so a, uh, for, he's transformed so, into one of the most special friends that he, I've had over is. the last years. He Brad Chancy is such a cool dude. Like I, I, so I, it's funny because before we started podcasting, I used to watch some of his stuff. Like you know, uh, and when I was doing my research on how to start one, he was one of those guys that I saw Big Sarge, like you name it. I saw, I, I did my research. Uh, surprisingly, uh, when and, and that's because I had the time I had COVID when I was researching all these things, right? So you have oh, all this, yeah. you, know, um, you could you could have fooled me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so uh, you know, Brett, and to see him now, like just kind of like hanging out with with us here and there, like just a, a show that that just started out of nowhere, and him on the show was just I think it's transformed us a little bit, and more people started seeing us, which was great. So I, I feel like I owe a lot to to we owe a lot to him and so like i said for you uh it was just kind of it's really cool meeting you and like even when I, when I met you at that thing like i just like uh when i was talking to you i was like this, this dude is so genuine and then i hadn't realized dude i had seen you in your tiktok videos <laughs> but, yeah, when, I saw, thing. when i saw him, i was like this looks familiar i've seen him so yeah because <laughs> you gained uh, you you gained so much uh and correct me if i'm wrong did you you gained more publicity with with the oh. tiktok videos that you did I was yeah. gonna show one really quick, uh, a, a video that you, but this one's on YouTube, and it, and yeah. it's funny that you said um, that you said about Jay Z or whatnot. And I think you know which one I'm gonna show. It's the, the Astro really State of Mind, and so I want to share it because it's just it was so funny how you kind of almost basically dissed at the Yankees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so give me one second. I'm gonna play it really quick. All right, here we go. You ready? Yes, let's All get right. it. Always getting washed by the Astros And y'all some assholes <laughs> New York Man, why are you acting so brand new? You always get ran through When we play New York, New York no, yeah. yeah, welcome to the land where it just don't stop. They said they really wanted us. Now, well, look what you got. Throw your ace up on the mound and watch that boy get rocked. Y'all were trying to get the throne, but y'all ain't built for that spot. And now, too bad, he the man. You can hate all you want. Call him trash every time, because we all know that's the front. You don't want to see a pitcher throw a ball, leave it up. And we're painting it right behind them. What you think? We bought a butt. When you say you wanted Houston, that means you wanted losing. We playing for the title. Y'all 
playing with excuses. Aaron Bo can crawl all he want. We know the truth is. We bring it to your door. Give a damn how the roof is. We'll be in the juice box. Throwing up our H's up. Every single year, you know, we racking all our haters up. Know we coming with it because the team is inspirational. You're not tuning in to the show. It's invitational. <laughs> Man. That's like, bro. I I don't I don't know how like. Oh, sorry. And I was also saying that it's still so special to watch. You know it, that 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 video itself. Again, I saw and I saw this right before I even like met you or anything. And yeah. So I just remember laughing so hard. I shared it along <laughs> with people too. I was one right. of those. And, well, thank you, I, man. Thank you. No, no problem. It was just like uh, it was just so funny seeing it. I, I loved it because it's true. Like they. They talked so much about the Astros, whether it was, uh, you know, the the Mariners or the Yankees. They talked so much. We want Houston. We want Houston. You got Houston. You got him. You got sweat. You and don't want Houston now. <laughs> you don't want Houston now. And nope. so to me, like, that's the creativity that you bring to the table. Like, you took that and made it into a song, literally, uh, basically, almost like a little diss track to New York. Oh, so yeah. let me ask you how. You, you, you took their anthem and just, hey, man, it's about yeah. Houston. You took the anthem and gave it yeah. back to them in a much better way. So let me ask you this: How how does someone think of that? How did you think of right. all that? So it, it so there's a video that came out before that one that initially went like mm-hmm. like not as viral as that one, but like pretty close. Uh-huh. So like my we were at the watch party for Game Three. We just went up. I think it was like five zero against New York. Uh, it was the the game Garrett Cole pitched. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Hmm. Um, and we just went up five zero. It's looking like it's like, okay, we're about to have a we're t- about to take a three-o lead. Mm-hmm. And uh my girl wanted to do a Instagram story, but when she starts record recording, I just started like top of the dome, like New York, and then you know the rest. And That's then the one where y'all are in there. Yeah, I only did right, the yeah. first two lines of that. And then we went to a haunted house that night with some friends. We like we did I didn't check my phone the rest of the evening. I woke up the next morning and I just just Check my phone and my eyes got huge. I started like elbowing her. Like, hey, wake up. Oh my God. This got 60,000 views. And oh, so I had a free day that day. And I was like, all right, if th- if people like this, they have no idea that I know how to produce and play the piano. They have no idea that I know how to like engineer. I have a professional studio and we're in, in my home, like top of the line gear. Like yeah. I can make this and like the presentation can be grand. So like, let's make this into a whole new song and, I was like, I guess I kind of like expected them to sweep. I was like, all right, the way this song works is if we sweep. Yes. We don't. Yeah. I can still put it out, but like it's even better if we sweep. Oh, of course. So I was kind of, I made this the day, like hours before game four with kind of the intention they have to sweep. Mm-hmm. And then we went down 3 I was like, oh, man, like we got to get back in this game. And I think Pena hit the home run to tie it. And then we take the lead. And then when like when the game's over, I was like, oh, perfect. Tomorrow's gonna be so right. insane. So I was waiting on to post, post it the next day. Yeah, post it the next day, and it goes crazy. It it was oh. glorious. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, and it's like with the Yankees, it warms the soul. Yeah, especially right. with them because man, they 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 talk so much about it. Uh, we yeah. every excuse in the book. The roof was open. Uh, the wind was blowing too hard. <laughs> yeah, at one point, like they said something about Javier's shiny chain or something like that, but it was a little blind. And I was like, "Come on, every excuse in the book, seriously." And yeah, uh, what was what was funny about that is, so uh, when you said that, we uh, we had a we had a family video when when we won the series uh, yeah. on, our, on ours, and uh, just like you, I didn't expect it to blow up, you know, and obviously it didn't blow up to to, to your extent. Oh, you're on ESPN, um, man. It was on ESPN, yeah. <laughs> and we ended up getting it on ESPN, which is weird on a on an ESPN commercial. And not weird, but it was cool. Sorry. And uh it was more like I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna record a reaction because people like seeing reactions, and we did. And uh the next day we had like like we had about what three thousand views or something like that. It was out of nowhere. Oh, so no. I had the same reaction you did. I was like, what? <laughs> and yeah, right. you know, it, it happened, but that's amazing how your your video just took off and it was just great. You you were waiting for that moment and then, boom, it happened. So that, that's yeah, amazing. it was, man. I couldn't even explain it, dude. Like I I was in the studio that day. Like like I posted it and I but I was in the studio and like yeah. and um I had just been getting like notification after notification and like 
And I was like, and good thing I checked my, my, uh, you know, on Instagram, it has you like the, the messages from people who don't follow you. Yeah. <laughs> I was checking them and like, look, and I never do check those. Yeah. But I was checking them in case anyone like, and then sure enough, guy from Fox 26, Matthew Seedorf, he hits me up and wants to do an interview that night. Yeah. I leave the studio to go home. I mean, we'll clean up the studio at home, make sure everything's spotless so it looks good on TV. Mm-hmm. And after that interview, bro, everything just took off from there. It snowballed. I and saw because I saw the one you did for like ABC 13 at one point, and then after because yeah, yeah. I want to lead up to 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 the parade stuff. But yeah, I, yeah. I I saw one that um that I think you did for KPRC or something like that channel too, yeah. and you performed uh, yeah. there yeah. at KPRC, yeah. which, which is funny because I was listening to the interview and I'm like, okay, they're asking him whatever and then it's funny because after you after you performed those ladies were ecstatic the the ones in the in the i saw that i was like well the whole dynamic just changed they were like lit up yeah. uh because when i saw your performance on there it was like you you were going off on it, it was you and i think i don't know who the other person was but there was my little cousin it was his birthday okay. yeah. and so uh i just remember hearing i was like yeah he's he's killing it and then I saw the demeanor change from those uh, from the interviewers. They were just like, "You gotta do something. You gotta do our song or something, like, something along those lines." And you're, yeah. and was, you, you were like, "I got y'all. I got y'all." Like so positive about it. It was, yeah. was funny to see. So it was, it was a good one. So, yeah, that's that's gotta feel like an amazing success. So was it like right after the other that they started reaching out to you, or Man, just kind of- literally like? I did Fox 26 one day, and then the very next day, like ABC 13 called, Channel 2 called, and they were just like. You know, can you, can we get some, some, uh, either you to pull up to the station or, you know, we can do something via Zoom or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we just did everything like right then and there. I had podcasts reach out. I was on 100.3 The Bull. Oh, man. I did a, oh, wow. That's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did a, a little like collab with them and that went crazy. So, like, it was a, and now I, I would make videos after every game. Yeah. Which so, is like, great. Yeah. So those were like, they would either be recaps or like, I will find one thing, like, cause I would, I like, like you, like you, I teach. Yeah, I teach at nights, and uh, and so like there's some times where I'd have like my my MacBook open watching the game while I'm in a lecture, and be like, all right, shut up, like, there's you know, we got <laughs> the runners on second and third. <laughs> I'm like, and I do it at the plate. Like, yeah, so I would have like, I would take like moments, like mental notes, so, like, okay, I can make a song about that. So like when. Uh, I think it was game four or five. I think it might have been four when it, it rained out before. And yeah, like, that's right. Mm-hmm. I made a song based on them not having a roof and writing a letter to the owner. Yeah. I was just finding like stuff that was topical about the World Series. Right. And continue to make songs about it. But, but it's funny because it creates so much content. Like it, it creates so much content. I was uh, uh, one, and, and this is relating it to what you're saying. It creates so much content because there's times when we're just kind of like at a dry spell. Like I always feel like the. Like at the moment where where it's just baseball, like basketball's out, football's still a good ways. It it almost seems like that's the hardest part of sports to talk about, you know, if if, if you're doing this. But yeah. when when it's like the AL, even in the ALDS, ALCS, all that, you have so much content that you can make because anything is being like looked at. And of course, they provided us with great content with no roof, no no, uh, we want Houston. The uh, wind, the wind, everything. The rotational right. axis of Earth, like right, exactly. The gravitational me, pull, uh, the, yeah. the moon tides, you know, all that stuff. And so, uh, it was funny, but it, but one of the things that, that I like that you said, like, like you and I, we both teach, and it's just, it's cra- it's, it's incredible how many people do this. Uh, like I podcast, uh, Brad, who's a teacher, also podcast, H Town Wheelhouse. You teach, and, and people underestimate the creativeness that comes from from educators. You know, yeah. And so I think it's uh, so seeing it in um, in this, like seeing you thrive again. It's it's to me. I'm like that's it. That's it. Get it. You know what I mean? It's like it's almost like we're living vicariously through you as an educator. You you get right. it. You know? <laughs> right. And I'm insp- I'm inspiration to professional models as well. Oh yeah, no, that's really working out for you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Rios, uh, we're at that halftime marker, so do you have a beer of the week for us today? I do. Okay, so Drew, if you haven't seen uh, uh, this part of the show, it's, uh, so Rios always brings a beer of the week. Usually he keeps it local, mm-hmm. except for last week when I brought him a beer from Argentina. Okay. So this week's also international as well. Okay, so this will be, Rios, which one are you doing it on today? 
So it's actually kind of funny. So I was doing some research for the one you got me for last week from Argentina. Yeah. Uh, this one popped up. And uh, so this one's from my motherland, Weinstaffener. Weinstaffener, Vitus. Okay, Weinstaffener. Here we go. Reels is Beer of the Week, y'all. All right, Reels, yeah, like let us know. Yeah, so like I mentioned, so the beer of the week this week is Vine Star from Novitus. So I was actually doing research for the one from Argentina last week, and this one popped up, and I did a little homework on it. And so this is from the world's oldest brewery. They've been around since the year of our Lord 1040. So they're very, very old. <laughs> and so well, this beer oh, how actually goes his age. Yeah, just about. Yeah, about a year or two off. Sorry, I have to no, but so <laughs> but basically this one actually last year is actually voted the unofficial best beer in the world. So there's this contest called got right here. The World Beer Awards. So it's unofficial, but it's actually like a World Beer Championship. It's actually voted beer the best beer in the world last year. Oh, okay. Awesome. So usually so, uh, when we start rating them, we usually rate them after like players. Like how many Altuves would you give it out of 10? <laughs> Whatever. So today, Reels, how many Mark Drews would you give it out of 10? Oh, 10 out of 10. This is really good. So this one is a stronger beer. It's about 7%, but it's not bitter. Like it, it starts off a little bitter, but the more you drink it, like it, you can taste like the, the citrus flavors. You can taste a little bit of banana. There. It's, it's a very complex beer, but it's good. And it's not like overbearing like some of these stronger beers are in. Oh. Hey man, this is yeah, 10 out of 10. Like right. I, I regret not finding out about this one sooner. There you go. All right. So see, uh, I have to ask him how, how many Mark Drews because you're already paid it, Mark. That's why. Hey, Mark, uh, do you have like a beer choice, Mark? What kind of do you have like? Uh, what's like your favorite? Uh, kind? You have to name the name, but just like what kind or something. I'm not the biggest beer drinker, but if I will give one like my favorite, uh, Crawford Bach because that's what oh that was the uh, that's what led to the the viral video. Yeah. So there like when I started singing it, it's yeah. because like we had a few. And a, so it was proper, <laughs> proper box mixed with a 5 lead. There you go. Oh, man. So, man, you were <laughs> you were really uh, hey. inspired by that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a recipe for success. Recipe for <laughs> success time. right there. So I want to talk about uh, another one, another song of yours that I really, really enjoyed and I think is, is really popular. A lot of people should know this one if they you know they listen to you. Um, synonymous with you is Ready to Rain. So obviously – I. For copyright reasons, I'm not going to be able to play it. I just want to show a little bit of the videos. That's cool. So, do it. Uh, so I'm gonna put it on mute real quick because uh, even the video itself, like even uh, the song itself, is great. But when I look at the video, uh, one of the things that always gets uh, that that I always like is uh, is when Brett H. Uh, Woodhouse tells you know says promotes us in a way that. That says, uh, you know, uh, we're we're H Town, we're you know, we're organic, you know, H Town grown or whatnot. So when I saw your video, I thought about when he said that because I look at it and I'm thinking, this is H Town. Through and through. I mean, for goodness' sake, you have Metris Mac yeah. in the front, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, you have yeah. Mac. <laughs> and then you shot it in front of like uh, you shot it in you know obviously in different parts. So I want to show a little bit of it because yeah. it's a, it's a big party. Uh, yeah. And so, obviously, you know, Mattress Mac is right there hanging out with you. I feel like I'm calling a play-by-play -play right there. Uh, <laughs> and so, right there, that's outside of Cobo. Look at you. Chilling. Put two rings on your hand. Outside. Is that it's right field? Right? right outside. Uh, I want to say it was, uh, yeah, right field. Yeah, right field, yeah. And so, I mean, first of all, the production. You even got the security, but like, <laughs> like right. in the back. So, like. Yeah, they were they were like mad cool at first. Like people when I like walked up to everyone, like yo, I'm shooting a music video. Would y'all like to be a part of it? I said it real loud, and people were like, uh, but hey. we're helping out. I did an interview with a uh, Fox 26 that morning at Minute Maid Park, uh -huh. and I saw the security lady earlier. So I'll be back shooting the video, and uh -huh. then it happened to be her. She's like, everyone, he was on the news today. Y'all get hyped, and so like, uh, so she oh had, man, she had, she had it all out. I mean the production. As I'm looking at this video, I'm like the production value. The production to it is great. Like it's, it's yeah. I see it clearly. Everything. Shout out my uh, man. Craig Biggio in there. Like you got Craig Biggio. I got Bagwell in there. Bagwell, there you go. There's Bagwell, and like it's outside of Cobos. Like you can't tell. You can't say Houston without Cobos. Like that's. That, yeah, that's my. That's my boy. You're throwing a pitch. What? Yeah. <laughs> is that a ninety? So, <laughs> ninety mile right. right Maybe it'd be like ninety-seven. But uh... <laughs> there you go. I love the yeah, conference. 
Get this, yeah. get this man a contract. <laughs> yeah, get this yeah. man to sign this man. <laughs> we, we, we need him yeah. out there right now. <laughs> yeah, put me in the dugout. Let me just sit there and just hype everybody up. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Every game should have like a Mark Drew experience. You know, you know how like they had a what's his name? Uh, uh, what's the closer for the Mets? The one that had the trumpet, Timmy Trumpet. Oh, uh, uh, oh. Edwin. Edwin. Uh, yeah. His name well, is Edwin, right? Or it was, yeah, 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 yeah. It's on the so, tip of my tongue, but yeah, I know you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Everyone's a president. I can't remember the name, but uh, now nah, I'm gonna remember. It. I'm gonna look it up shortly. But uh, they should have like a Mark Drew uh, it, with somebody. Obviously, Presley has got his own, but uh, I feel like somebody, one of our closers. I think Mark Drew should end up. Uh, Trying to, uh, hey, not even box. because the openers, Christian Javier, forever. Hey, bro, like, I, I need y'all to get hyped, man. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm getting up all these runs, bro. <laughs> I want it so bad to be someone's walk up song, but like, um, you know, the uh, I, I've tried to partner up with the Astros a, a couple times now. We're still, you know, um, hopefully, okay. but, you know, of course, those are you know, that team is everything to me and my family. So, of course, even if they That's don't cool. do it, it's still, you know, it's still it's love. A dream. Right? It's, yeah. it's a it's a it's a dream. Sorry, let me adjust the screen better. Uh, it's it's a it would be like a, an amazing dream, right? Just to have, just to be part of that. I mean, yeah. Looking at the wrong one. Is this it? Oh, whatever. Anyway, uh, people know who we are. And so, nonetheless, dude. Like, so let me ask you this. So, it obviously, it would be a dream. Uh, I know Brett. One of one of Brett's dreams is to be to uh, be in El Cap. I think in uh, what's the name, the name of our screen or whatnot. Um, a grande or something like that. And mm-hmm. so uh it'd be kind of cool to see you throw a first pitch also. That'd be great to see you do that. Hey, I hope hopefully I'm I'm gonna start uh gearing up and trying to put the pressure on the team to uh, when I talk to like some of the head like the head people in, in the front office, mm-hmm. some some people are like really on board about yeah. it. You know, it kind of has to be like you know, kind of like you know, sometimes they plan things so far in advance that like they kind of already have things set in stone or okay. things of that sort. So hopefully, you know, we're pushing for it. The thing I, is, I want to put the pressure on the, the team. Like, I want to, like, get all the fans. But, yo, like. like me too. I want to yeah. start this petition. Let's start this petition to have Mark uh, Mark Drew throw the throw one of the first pitches at the Astro. I want to see that happen. I want to see it at the World Series. Let's do that. I, I want to see it at the, oh, see it the World that, Series. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to see Mark Drew throw the first pitch. He was a pitcher before, so it's not it's not gonna be nothing mediocre. It's gonna be, be, better, it's gonna be better than fifty cent. You got that going for him. <laughs> low, low key, humbly speaking, it might be the best first pitch of all time. There you go. See? <laughs> that's so, him being humble, y'all. Ho- hopefully, I know that maybe one day I'm able to throw two because I want to throw like a decent fastball and then bring it back. Like, let me throw this curve. And I should show you what that looks like. <laughs> you, won't, you won't leave. Like, they don't like the existence of Scorpion. Right. He's, Actually, uh, my he's, trying, he's, trying to, he's just trying to get a contract. Is, bring the other lineup. Like, bring, go ahead bring him up to bat. <laughs> bring, up, yeah, bring, up, bring up the first batter. I want to see what, what I can do. Yeah. No, bring man. the Jordan. Let me, let me see if I can get him. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> then he's like, oh, never mind. I was just no, uh, no, man. It'd be, it'd be great to see you. Seriously. I think uh, as Houstonians, I think we should do that. We should have, we should have to get you to, to – to, Throw the first pitch at one of these games. Yeah, hopefully this season. Maybe if not next or whenever. Yeah, um, yeah, that'd be great to see you do that. Absolutely. Um, and if it never happens, like with the Astros, like what, what means more than the actual team partnering up hmm. is like you know, like what you said, like kind of like Houston is rallying rallying behind me, and because like even last year I was talking about it with like so when all that stuff happened, it all hmm. happened so fast that you hardly have any time to just sit back and like, yo, that was so tight. I was on the news today. Yeah. <laughs> It was like so many back to back to back, and my cousin was telling me, like, bro, you were part of a World Series run. Like, yes, people right. look back on it. Like, some of your songs they're gonna like bring up. It's like that's so tight that like you know people have kind of chosen me to be like their someone who gets them hyped before games, yeah. hyped before series and stuff like that. That that's it's a lot of responsibility. It is, and I, I can imagine. I I can't even begin to imagine how. Like, did you feel that pressure? Like, how how did you deal with that? Man, I, I didn't have time to just fit. Bro, I was like, so honestly, some of those games, they end at 10. I'm up to like 3, 4 a.m. getting the song ready for the next day. Yeah. So, like, know. it was not – I I hardly had much time to just sit back and, like, feel pressure. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah, like, it was just like, I just got to do this. Um, I'm given an opportunity that not many people, like, get. So, I'm, I'm going to take advantage of it. 
Yeah. There you go. Was there? You're always, you're, you're always gonna be tied to that real serious run because if they think right. about it, they're gonna think yeah. about your songs and your videos, man. Yeah. That's, was it's, there? It's, was there ever a moment? I know you said you were busy, but was there ever one key moment in in while all that was happening when you were able to kind of like step out of your skin and you were just like, "I was part of this. I was part of this. This this World Series thing." When you were able to finally embrace it and take it in, how'd that feel? I think at the very end of the parade. Yeah. At the very end of the parade, as soon as it ended, and like you know, um, people are starting to leave, and I'm watch. I'm looking back, like man, the last time this happened. Last time we had a parade, I'm one of like I was, you know, behind the barricades, like trying to get a good uh, view of the players. Now I just walked the entire route and hyped up the entire city of Houston. So After let me ask you this: who, who, who else can say that? Like, who else can say that? Yeah, it, was, it was cool. It was real cool. Amazing, you know? Not a lot of people can say that. That's exactly right. Let me go to your uh, your TikTok really quick. Uh, yeah. And there's this is the video. So how? Uh, how were you oh, able to really, 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 really quick? So yeah. Kyle Tucker just hit a grand slam. So we're Ooh. up seven to six. Kyle Let's Tucker hit a grand go. slam. If ain't nobody else got me, yeah, King Tucker. Let's King go. Tucker got me. Let's Let's go. go. I, just, I just got the alert. I was like, oh, that is awesome. Man. Oh, yeah, top, top, top. It's oh, ninth inning too. So <laughs> let me show this this video yeah. here. Man. Looking at it, go, go ahead. Oh man, unfortunately, I had to work that day, so I'm very yeah, upset. Yeah. I missed this. Well, you know what? <laughs> I lived it up for the both of us, bro. That was That's man, insane, man. <laughs> I haven't gone back and looked at stuff like this, but like looking at it now, like, bro, it was. And so, they wanted me to perform like some of my songs that you know that people gravitated to, and I got the call. That's what they said. And then, when I get there, they're like, okay, like. So am I just performing or like am I am seeing the entire thing? Matter of fact, fun fact, I don't I'm, I don't think I've ever told this story. It almost didn't happen like because of like the generator what? almost went out. Really? Oh, what? Like Man. before so b- before we go on, the generator had been on for a while, but I figured like uh oh, generators last forever, at least like some of the ones like my dad had did. And yeah. then one guy comes up there, he's like, Hey, we should probably turn this off. And the DJ tells him, like, yeah, but these these have a pretty good run life, right? Yeah, and, the water and, engine take is not too bad on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're like, they're like, you know, he's like, they, they should be fine though, right? And he's like, these things only run for two hours and it's been on for 45 minutes just doing nothing. I'm like, and the whole time. So I didn't want to be Gosh, difficult. Wait a minute. To work with. <laughs> I didn't want to be difficult to work with at all. I want to be right. like, why did you have it on? We we're doing nothing, you know, because that's like in my mind, like you just can't help but think that like if this right. goes off while I'm performing everything like this whole thing just goes then i'll just like be like reduced to like you know those like queens of england just waving at everyone like, waving at everybody <laughs> hello astros fans you peasants <laughs> hello peasants yeah hello peasants <laughs> and so like i was like man like a good people like a good amount of houston like loved my videos but there's also gonna be a lot of people like who the hell is this guy just waving at us so right. <laughs> I was when like, you get the call. Do you? Oh, so, I'm sorry. Sorry, keep going. Whatever. Sorry. I mean, well, so basically, like, the entire time, like, they tell us, all right, we're about to leave now. Um, we're we're starting to move, and they're starting that they, they yank back the the cord for the generator. Vroom, nothing. Vroom, nothing. For five minutes, Ooh. it would not cut on. Oh wow! I don't get nervous at all. I'm a very I'm, I, I like to think that you know I kind of equate everything to sports. Um, as long as you prepare for it. And prepare for multiple scenarios, then the a performance is just like the exact same thing, except now you have people watching you. So, but I've never really got like stage fire and stuff like that. This was the only time where I'm like my knees are buckling. So I'm yeah. like, yo, this this cannot be happening. I look up to the heavens. It's a clear day. I'm like, God, um, it's me again. <laughs> please, yeah. I was like, hey, me like, again. <laughs> I don't know when I'm gonna get this opportunity again, Lord. Like, if you can just help me out. You know, like I'll make sure to do some extra special for people moving forward. Like I'll 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 change some things about myself that maybe need improving. And um, like we get, I would say, no further than two hundred feet. I'm I can see people; they can see me mm-hmm. about two hundred feet away. And it had not been working for five minutes. I don't know where turns back on. Like it's go time. It's so then, then, hey, 
Won't yeah, he do it? Won't he do it? <laughs> yeah, right. So now it's just like jump off the truck and it's like, all right, now it's time to just now it's on. Entire parade. I just lose my mind. Dude, it's, it's game time at that point. The yeah. fact that you got to perform at the Astros World Series Oops. parade, that alone cements your, your history with being a part of this team when that all happened. Yeah, it was people a, look back to that. Special. And and uh, how do you call it? And be and you know, and that's something that you I mean that's that's got to feel incredible performing at the World Series Astros Parade. Hey, it will first forever many, be the most. Many. <laughs> it will be yeah. It will forever be the most special thing I do. Um, I see myself like growing with this. I see myself taking this as far as it can go. You know, I, I see myself potentially being in position to like even like win a Grammy one day. But let's say like that oh, yeah. that, that day comes right. The World Series will always be more special than that, bro. It's um right. That's man. It's like, almost like you've already won your 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 yeah. Uh, right? your trophy. You everything, won your own trophy. Everything from here is just like the icing on top. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, now, I was I was downtown when the game was going on, and man, it was just it was like a movie scene after the game was over. It was like, oh man, that was. I was just I was just wandering downtown for hours. It was, bro, it was just like a movie. Bro, it's just, that was it's surreal. It was surreal. What's, what's funny is that I know Rios invited myself and uh, and Poppy to go to Cobos because everybody was watching it at Cobos, and uh, I was there. Yeah. Yeah, and so I was just like, and I wanted to go so bad because I mean, I uh, I could have, but I, I didn't because you know, family, you know, family, one, our family wanted to see it together. I was like, you know what, you know, if this happens, this is special. Obviously, I would love to have to have seen that too, but I knew fam to me, family was was important, so I knew yeah. that I I had to do that, but and I don't regret it honestly because we 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 had a lot of fun, and I think and you you got the was, video too, like it, yeah, the video it out. so. I that think was, my, phone, my phone died, so I had to record anything. I was like, oh. Yeah, so I think it's 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 great. I think everybody was where they were supposed to be at yeah. that time in order for like all the stars to align in the Astros, you know, win this thing. And uh, honestly, a nerve wracking game. Yeah, for you, it man. was nerve wracking. Oh. It was nerve wracking, and and honestly, once Kyle Tucker caught it, it was just like amazing. It was redemption. It was, no, it was all the emotions was, what, that you've been feeling for this this whole ride. It was it was. It was just like it was just a release, and, I, and that to, that moment will always live with me. Like I got to witness a World Series. How many people have lived and not been able to see their their team uh, win a World Series? We've seen. Two. We've seen two. Yeah, bro. Two I remember two in five years. <laughs> I remember in seventeen, I hugged every person over the age of like seventy. Right. She was like, "Yo, I'm so happy for you, man." Like I'm at the time, I was like, "I'm in my twenties." Like. I've been waiting for. I feel like I've been waiting for a while. You've been waiting for you know such a long time. You finally a whole see lifetime. It. Yeah, yeah. So I, like it, it was crazy. And even I mean, in like you know Game Six last year, yeah. like it was so hard to watch because like that game depended on if I would perform at the parade or not. Right. Oh, so for you, it was. Yeah. You know, it it was like you. I I can't even begin to imagine. So did did you know before like the game or how, how did how did they reach out to you if you don't mind? They, they reached out to me uh, on Facebook. And it was a lady who's worked for the mayor's office. She yeah. wanted me to give her a call, and I gave her a call immediately. And she said, "Hey, you know, we we love what you're doing. What you're doing is a great representation of Houston. Um, would you be interested in performing? Because if we win tonight, we're gonna pull up. Like we're we're trying to like we're trying to get make sure yeah, we got no everything. Rush. We're gonna we got like two days to plan this if we do yeah. win tonight. So like oh." Before she could finish the sentence, like absolutely yes. So, like yes. when I went out that right. night, <laughs> when when we went out to watch the game, like man, like we have to win tonight because like this is like so much writing. On, this is a, yeah. a cool opportunity for me. Like who's gonna, like you said, right. like who's, they've done that before. And I was like, I don't know if I can. If we lose tonight, I don't know if I can watch another game with that Ooh. much on the line for me. So, uh, when actually when Jordan hit it. It's when I, was like, oh, I knew, I knew, I knew it's over. Oh, that man, point, yeah, once Jordan hit it, I was like, you can't. Our last game. So, yeah. so that swing so much, of momentum was just yeah. Man, so, just, so let me ask you. So, with all that riding on the line, what what was your reaction seeing Jordan hit that ball? So when Jordan hit it, it became clear because you know it's like baseball is so funny how like you see it like one call that like is you see like a anytime a, a manager like hits the panic button, yeah. it never ends well for them. Look at like Scott Service in Game One of the LDS, like, mm -hmm. like coming in and trying like you're like you're over preparing for something that like look if you're when you try too hard sometimes it doesn't always work out for you. And um, Aaron Nolan or is it Aaron Nolan or Nola for Philly who was pitching Game Nola, Six? Nola. 
Nola. Nola, no, yeah, no. Right. And he was pitching a great game. He was. He, he was. was like slicing and dicing. And when they took him out, I was like, it's something kind of was like, oh man, something's gonna happen. It's how it always happens in baseball. It mm-hmm. used to happen with us. I look, uh, Hinch pulling yeah. Grinky in Game Seven. <sighs> you over, you start overthinking, right? So when that happened, and when Jordan came to bat, I was kind of like, oh, this has to, this can only go one way. <clears throat> like this, this is the this is a storybook right this here. This is the moment. This is where you write right? the story. <laughs> right. This is it. If we win it, it's from this at bat. So I felt that before it happened. As soon as he right. as soon as that ball took off, like the entire place erupted. Oh, it did. It, was, it went crazy when he hit that home. Like oh it was that, the roof that, damn near came off, man. Like it was you never, yeah. After that, it was hard to come back because all that momentum just shifted over to the Astros. And yeah, that was it. And for it, it's funny, if I wish I would have mentioned that because I would have been like, Drew, you could have performed. <laughs> you know? so I actually got up on the like there's a table right next to us, and I got I was like Everyone, I'm performing Monday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing! And that's people amazing. are like, "Yeah!" <laughs> oh, I can't imagine. I can't that's even right. imagine that. Is, that right. is so awesome, dude. That's such a great story. Like that yeah. is such a great story. That's that's why I wanted to uh, do this episode with it because I was like, I want people to know Mark Drew and every everything that you've told us. I'm like, I was just hooked. I'm like picturing it there. You know, you painted a great picture. Uh, uh, in, in our heads of what you went through, your inspirations, the, the uh, just that adri- that that uh, pressure that you had, and the, obviously you dealt with it wonderfully, and, and you know, and now wishing you the best success. So uh, before we before we wrap up our hour, I wanted to ask you: you have a new song coming out? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it and what what inspired you to make it and all that? So <clears throat> after the World Series happened, a lot of like companies would hit me up and. Like either make theme songs for them. Well, this comic book I, hit, I reached out, and um, they were like, "Hey, you know, we have this like community of comic book creators, and like one of them has a song, and we want a song now." And and I actually known him from like a mutual friend, and so I made the song for their comic book uh, last December, and I've held on to it for a while. Like they've put it on some of their promo, but like uh, I said, like, I've talked to him like, "Hey, you know." I have these things kind of lined up for me right now, but like later down the road, let's talk about releasing it. Mm-hmm. And I love it. It's so catchy. The beat is infectious. Yeah. Um, I think uh, what I'm like, what I'm singing on there, like the, like the melody is very catchy. Um, I think um, everything about it is pretty cool. Cause and it's one of those songs where like, it's made for a comic book, but like you couldn't really tell by listening to it. Right. But like anyone, you don't have to be a, co- a fan of comics to, to enjoy this song and it's i think it's gonna be the last like is this song is gonna be taking a step away from the astro stuff that i'm normally mm-hmm. doing and then september we're gonna get back to the astro stuff yeah. and and then october you kind of already know what to expect from oh the yeah we'll, we'll be you'll be, we'll be it's the, astro stuff, the it's just the, it's astro's invitational at that point yeah, yeah, yeah and then um and so i'm making Astros content all October and November, or I guess after game four in the World Series when we sweep. And then um, uh, after Get that, three. <laughs> yeah, right? Because I've, I've made enough music to release one song a month for like the next year and a half. Whoa, all right. Whoa, it's your same so busy. What? Oh, yeah, I've been, and I'm adding to that. So it's probably closer to two years. There you go. I have like a song for the next month. There you go. Man, I'm I'm wish like I said I'm wishing you the the most success out of it. It's kind of cool. I'm I'm glad that you're working on these projects too, not just you know working on the Astro stuff or, or and whatnot yeah, because yeah. it shows your full potential. You know. Um, yeah, you know. I'm oh, a- spe- speaking of Astros, they just won seven to six. Oh, I guess they were. That's, 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 that's huge. That's huge. That's that's for huge. for a championship team. You need to be able to win those games where late on the win probability isn't so high. So. Mm-hmm. It's a good win because yeah. the odds was like basically it was like plus almost sixteen hundred for the Astros to win. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, the new song is called "Come Alive." It comes out August twenty fifth this okay. Friday. The pre orders will be available, um, so be on the lookout for that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely, man, definitely, oh, definitely. I'm I'm, I'm going to be jamming to that for sure. I've seen little snippets of it. I think is that the one where you're where you're singing like when you're like on the beach background or something. Yeah, like that? yeah, wow. yeah. Oh, it, it's. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I seen it. I seen it on your Instagram, like the little snippets, like yeah. where, 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 where,
Oh, and me, my girl's my social media manager. She uh, and she so it's not Gal- Gal- it's not Galveston. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's not clear blue water, but now it's not Galveston. Definitely Galveston. <laughs> Yeah, she's my social media man. She, she actually, she's the reason why like everything went viral in the first place. No, uh, she, she follows us too on it, and she's yeah. you can tell she's super supportive. So if you're watching uh, when you when this comes out, uh, big shout out to you. But to her, yeah, she, she yeah, was cool yeah. when we met her. Like she was yeah. a real friendly person. Like it was really yeah, she, her, She's a she's an amazing soul, and uh, there you go. I'm uh, excited because she, she's also an aspiring content content creator herself, and I'm excited to see her get it off the ground because the stuff she has planned is more special than anything I could ever think of. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, we're definitely supporting, you know. We're yeah, definitely supporting. Gotcha, man. What's her uh let me let me see if I can put it uh here in the meantime also just so um we can uh everybody can check out her her is it would, would it be on Instagram or is it uh, Yeah, so her Instagram the one that she uses the most is at vanity christine and it's v a n a d i e uh, Christine, C H R I S T I N E. Okay, so Van B A B A N A D I E. Yeah. Christine. Okay, got it. Christine. That's all right. That's IG right there. So, uh, right there. Yeah, Eddie Christine, follow. Yeah, give her, her a follow. follow. She's yeah. going to do some beautiful things in this world that she's uh, she's going to continue to do. What she she used to be in the Peace Corps and ultimately want to kind of wants to get back to that era in her life where she was dedicating a lot of her time to helping others in, in need. So I'm, I'm excited to see like part of like what gives me inspiration to get this off the ground is mm-hmm. to be able to see her, you know, like geared towards that and get back to where she used to be. Oh, for sure. No, definitely. And and you and if it feels like y'all do such a great job supporting each other, uh, yeah. and whatnot. And and obviously, like I've seen her social media work with you and stuff like that, and all the promotions. And I think that's 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 amazing that that, that y'all have that that type of partnership. You know that yeah that uh, camaraderie with each other to to be hey. able to do that. So that's awesome, hey, man. Team, teamwork makes the dream work. It does. Yeah, and I got right, the best teammate. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. No, man. So, hey, listen, Drew, I, we need to have you back on the show uh, again because you, you're you a phenomenal human being, first of all. You're a great person uh, to talk I to. Thank you. Thank no, you. No, no. And, and like I said, we wish you the most success uh, going forward, and we just hope, you know, the sky's the limit for you. You're a very talented dude, so. And hey, same for you guys. Same for oh, you guys. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate that, man. Really, really great dynamic uh, that you got going on. And uh, for anybody listening and, and for you as well, like, guys, just keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. You only really fail when you quit. And as long as you never quit, the dream is always alive. There you go. There you go. Heard uh, uh, great words spoken by Mark Drew. It's town, baby. That's hey, 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 future Grammy winner. Preach your Grammy winner. There you go. You're looking at him. <laughs> right on. Um, Speak into existence. Yeah. Absolutely. And so and if you want to follow Mark Drew, basically all, all the social medias basically are at Mark Drew HTX. Of course, represent the H. At Mark Drew HTX. Follow him up. I believe that's your Twitter handle. That's your Instagram. Everything, yeah. Threads. Uh, TikTok. Yeah. All of it. So it's not hard. Look him up. Mark Drew. At Mark Drew HTX. Please follow us, man. You are not going to regret it. It's amazing. Amazing artist. All right, that's going to be our show for today. Uh, well, I think that's for the week. Actually, I think we're done for the week, Rios. Uh, I think you may have some stuff coming up, right, Rios, uh, with uh, Hardcore Sports or no? Uh, tomorrow, yeah, the Pick and Roll Podcast. There you go, Pick and Roll there's not, Podcast. There's not, there's not much basketball to talk, so we'll see. Yeah, I, know, I was going to say, how's, how's that going to go? <laughs> but nonetheless, man, uh, awesome that the Astros beat the Orioles on the on, on this one. It, it just didn't seem like it was going to happen, but hey. I, yeah, we were down six to two the entire game until the ninth yeah. inning, and that King Tuck came through in the clutch. There you, go. you know what it was? Is because Mark Drew was on our show today. That's why. Hey, there you go. <laughs> it's a it's a preview of October. Or in my eyes, it's because I was on your show. Ah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, See, you, you guys, you guys ah. are the, you guys are the reason. Hey, that, hey, that's what the Astros are. America's team, baby. America's yeah, team. We're taking right, it y'all. from the Cowboys. Yeah, we're taking it from the Cowboys. All right, y'all. Uh, we are – that's going to be it for our show today. Uh, please follow our friends at Let's Talk Sport also, at Let's Talk Sport. Uh, also our friends uh, at the uh, Sideline Sport, at Sideline Sport 1. 
and of course our good friends over there in Philly or wherever they are. I think they're in Philly. I'm not sure. They're all over the place. Uh, Mitch Kowski <laughs> and the and the and the gang at Hardcore Sports underscore. And again, please don't forget to follow uh, at Van, uh, Vanity Christine. Amazing, amazing person. And of course, our good old friend at Mark Drew HTX. Follow him up. And you know our social media is right down at the bottom of the screen. So uh, check us out. Uh, our, our Twitter, our well X, whatever you're calling it now, and uh, I'm not calling it. It's Twitter. I'm not calling it. <laughs> our name already sounds dirty enough. I'm not calling it. Yeah, X. we're not. Yeah, I'm not. I don't feel, I feel we're calling it X. <laughs> and of course, uh, uh, our Instagram account, which we're trying to grow now since it's brand new. So uh, at Just Fans Pod, hit us up. All right, y'all. That's gonna be it. We're gonna hit the outro here, and uh, don't go anywhere, Mark. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit after. Okay. Right All on. right, y'all. That's going to be it for tonight. We'll see y'all when we see y'all. Peace.